proudly sponsored by Music Go Round. We really just want to say thank you so much for your support. It would not have been possible without you. So, that said, I get a chance to uh, talk to you about something that is very, very exciting and very near and dear to my heart as a guitar player. Basically, as a company, Orange is about passion. We were founded on a passion. You as members of the press, you're passionate about writing. You're passionate about writing about gear. We are passionate about creating gear. And the gear that we create is born out of passion. Out of, the, out of the seed of passion comes innovation. And innovative products are those products that allow players to be inspired. And ultimately, the stuff that you write about is to inspire and inform players. And we're basically partners in this. And so the thing about this, this thing is the VT-1000 is in fact a valve tester. Uh, at kind of, just at, at first blush you might think, well, okay, it's a valve tester. What kind of big deal is that? Well, the big deal is, is that it, it impacts virtually anybody and everybody who has anything to do with the tube amp. And by the way, I will be fairly brief, so I'm not going to bore you with a bunch of extraneous details, but we will be taking questions at the end, and I will be available at the booth if you want to get into deeper detail about this. From the point of manufacture, literally to the point of resale, this piece of gear is relevant. So the point is, is that if a manufacturer has a VT-1000, they are basically able to test preamp tubes, and power amp tubes, not on a scale of 1 to 3, but on a scale of 1 to 15, which basically means at the point of manufacture, your preamp tubes, you've got somebody who has next to no knowledge about tubes, able to push a couple of buttons, and about two minutes later, 
give or take, on preamp tubes, maybe three minutes on power amp tubes, they're able to quantify every tube that they're potentially going to come across. It's a preamp tube and a power amp tube. The end result is you're able to literally, on a specificity scale of 1 to 15, quantify the amount of gain in your preamp tubes. Basically, if your company is dedicated to producing the same amplifier last week that it's going to produce this week, that it's going to produce next week, that means there's tremendous continuity in your production lines. And what ends up happening is, is that you're able to choose out of bulk tubes which tubes are going to go into which model. As a company, we're very conscious about feedback and the tubes that we use. And one of the tubes that I tested this week was uh, a pair of tubes from Ruby. And when they went into our amplifiers, they were tested coming from Ruby. They were tested before they went into the amplifiers. And when I pulled them out after extensive use, they were still perfectly matched. What this means for a company like Orange is that the dedication that we put into crafting the amplifier, that circuit, as it travels over the time and as, as that tube begins to cascade into the depths of, of being needing to be replaced, it's still a consistent experience. This is one of the reasons why people resonate with Orange as a brand. We believe in quality, we believe in quality components. Alex, would you be so kind as to hand that out? Uh, for those of you who have not had a chance to handle, that right there is the socket set from our OV4, and I, I, I'm hoping, if you guys don't mind, it's gonna make a little bit of noise, and that's okay. Uh, so something very unique about that socket set, in the middle positions, you're gonna see two 6L6s, and on the outer position, you're gonna see a pair of EL34s. And basically, for those of you that are amp fanatics, the question I want you to pose yourselves as you're actually holding those is, how many of your amplifiers could you put those tubes in there at the same time and not have to rebias them without that? And that was basically our starting place. So basically, we're picking up from that point. And I want you if, you, if you don't mind, just kind of take a look at the quality of the construction. You don't often see the internal parts of an orange amplifier. That's the quality of which we build things, because quality is how, when an amplifier starts off on the napkin as somebody's design and ends up in somebody's house and on stage, there's a consistent experience. When that amp leaves a factory, it ends up in a music store. And when there's quality tubes, when that amp is built from the preamp all the way through the power amp, and those tubes are matched and very precisely measured for every amp in the product line, it means that no matter whether the person is buying it online, whether they're buying it in a store, the amp that was made last week, this week, and next week are going to sound the same. That's one of the reasons that Orange has the integrity that we do, because we believe in making that experience consistent. But we don't just want to hog that to ourselves, we want to make that experience possible for other manufacturers because we believe in passion about gear. And when you're motivated by that, the things that you do are a reflection of that. Okay, so this is where it gets cool. I'm a pedal geek. Any other pedal geeks out there? Come on, give me some. Thank you very much. Okay, so uh, price point on this thing uh, is $4.99 US. What does that translate to pounds? $3.49 pounds. That's less than my vintage tube screamer. Okay, this is where it gets fun. Uh, we're going to dial the clock back to, this by the way is the 30th anniversary Tube Screamer. I have basically every Tube Screamer that Ivan has ever made it, it, it through the entire product line. I am a pedal fanatic, but let's roll the clock back 30 years and think about something. The reason players started using these pedals is because the amplifiers that were available 30 years ago did not have cascading gain stages at a price point that people could afford. So they were like, the only way I can get that tone that I, get on that, that I hear on that record is to stack a bunch of pedals. So for the past 30 years, we've been going around buying more pedals and more pedals, and, and then there was like the first kind of the, if you will, the, the, the Eve pedal, and then there was the post-Eve pedal, and then there was the post-Eve Eve pedal that was designed to try and sound like the Eve pedal. But in reality, all of these, and these are mine, so I'm passionate about these, but they were really designed to sound like this, and they were designed to sound like this. And so we've spent all this time here when we're really mimicking what's here. And the real beauty of this device is, you just kind of go like this, even I can use this, ladies and gentlemen, it just screws around, you stick it in there like that, you press the appropriate button, you turn it on, thank you, testing one, two, and you just select the appropriate tube type along the scale there. And then the beautiful part, if you're testing in a factory, I'm done, this was the perfect tube, I stick the next tube in there, it's going to know what type of tube I was testing previously. That means if you've got somebody in your factory testing tubes, uh, testing, there we go. Hello? I'm back. Test. Great, thank you. Um, if you've got somebody in your factory testing your tubes, it means that they're able to go through these with a tremendous amount of efficiency. Um, we're going to come back to the power of tube for just, in just a moment. Basically, 
as an example of where guitar players are going to go with it. We're still a little hot up here. Um, testing, there we go. Where guitar players have the potential to go with this is amazing. So we've geeked out on pedals, right? For 30 years, we've been like, oh, let me get that other Tube Screamer and the new Tube Screamer and the pedal that sounds kind of like a Tube Screamer, but it's a knockoff, and this guy made it in his bedroom, and it's cool. Well, we've been chasing this whole thing where tube technology has advanced, and pedals are kind of doing the same thing they were doing 30 years ago. It doesn't have to be like that. And the key to this thing is this beautiful piece of technology. So if, for example, I've got a series of preamp tubes here that have been lying in my drawer. Anybody have a stack of these in their drawer? Okay, yes, you do. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Hi. So basically, I have these three different tubes in there from, okay, we're going to go a little geeky here because this is the fun part. All right, so if you're experiencing a certain lift in enthusiasm, it's because this is where, this is the guitar player going, so I can do with tubes what I've been doing with pedals, except for the fact that these guys, as cool as they are, they're totally one-dimensional. When you plug into a real tube amp and you plug in and you have that night where the heavens open and the audience and the band, everything is perfect and you turn around and you look at the amp and you go, oh yeah, it's on. Those are the moments as players we live for. And being able to take that moment and document exactly where your preamp tubes were in that moment or it was close, I need to take the number, number one socket, I need to bump that gain up. Instead of having an eight, nine, I need to go to a nine. Or maybe I want a little bit of crossover distortion so I'm going to change that tube and have a little bit more crossover distortion because some guys like to design their tube circuits like that. So the point being, I have three different tubes here. I have a groove tube, I have a vintage mullard, and I have a, an electric harmonics. I basically was able to test three tubes that I knew nothing about. And normally a guitar player would basically stick them in their amp. Okay, there's that one, there's one. Okay, that's there's that one. What did the first one sound like again? Put that one back in. By the time you're done doing that, you have no recollection of what the first one sounded like. Well, basically what I've done here is in Sharpie, and this is the new weapon for the tube owner, I wrote the value of the tube. So now I can definitively look at that tube as it's in the socket. I know exactly what the value is. And yes, I smile about this tube. This is crazy. Because you can test every single one of these tubes. You know what they are. And effectively, it's like taking this pedal right here and going, okay, here is my electroharmonics. There is my groove tube. And there's my molar. And we can document what we've been doing here, which is basically mimicking the sound of tubes we can actually do in our amplifiers. This unit here, one of the great things, and, and how many here, how many people, well, first of all, I write, okay, so I get the same press releases by the million you guys do, and I also get the boxes of components. I'd like to ask you guys, you don't actually have to answer this because it's a rhetorical question, how many times do you actually not get the appropriately terminated AC cable, and you get a bag of little plasticky things. I got like 50 of those running around my house, and I have to, when it comes in, I have to actually whip out my tape. I actually have to tape every single one of those power supplies and write down which one it's for, so I can keep tra track of them. Well, guess what? This is easy. This is actually properly done. It's terminated properly. Whatever area in the world you're going to be in, you're going to get the appropriate receptacle to plug into the power supply. No looking for the appropriate adapter. Thank you. They'll thank you. Okay, um, that's pretty much this unit. You can test your preamp tubes, you can test your power amp tubes. There's actually one last little piece I want to talk about. Um, anybody ever gone into a music store and gone to buy a used amplifier and you had this vision in your head, man, this amp is going to be great, I can't wait to plug in, you plug in and you're like, that sucked. And you walk away from that store kind of going, I guess the fantasy that I built in my head about this brand, I was wrong. More often than not, it's actually not that you were wrong, it's that the tubes in that amplifier had either been retuned by somebody who did not take it back to the original spec, or it simply was never retuned. And the beauty of this unit is it means that literally from the point of production through the point of resale, that means that you're sending it out of the factory totally consistent, it means the distributor has a totally consistent product, that means the retailer gets a consistent product. That means the end user, whether they're buying online or in a store, they get a consistent product. It means it's consistent as they're going from, if they're backlined, how many people back, how many backliners are in the room? I fly to Canada, I get, it, it actually, I don't, I'm not even gonna go there. There's another company whose amp that I use when I go to Canada because that's what they've got in that crazy little town that I go into. And that amp sucks. Okay, there's nothing worse than going into a city because they don't have this and the amp you plug into is totally inconsistent with the last amp that you used. 
That's real world. And every one of those companies is going to need to own one of these. Every studio is going to need to own one of these. It's great stuff. We're going to, um, first of all, you guys have been very patient. Nobody has walked out, which I really appreciate. Your time is super valuable to us. We're going to open up to some questions if you've got any. Uh, we have some serious experts here who know a lot more about tubes than I do. Um, and in closing, I just want to say one last little thing before we open it up to questions. I brought this book at AES, uh, Design and Construction of Tube Guitar Amplifiers. I really think that probably by the time I'm dead, I will have understood maybe like a fifth of this book. And I understand about a, four, uh, about a sixth of it at this point. The beauty of it is, is this thing takes less knowledge than I've got to operate. And that's, that's, it's just so powerful. And I think when you begin to think about all those different experiences we just painted, the range of people who can use this, and the scope of things that they can do with it, you're going to hear a lot of people saying, my product is revolutionary, my product is totally innovative, and some of those products really are revolutionary innovative. I encourage you to measure those other products in this project product by the range of people who can use it, and by the scope of things that can be achieved with it across the entire life cycle of the product it has to do with. Thank you so much. We really appreciate your time. Thank you. Cheers. And you out there too. We have a uh, handheld microphone right here. Does anybody have any questions? Uh, we'll be happy to answer them. And again, if you're feeling shy, I'm at the booth as, as everybody else. But if somebody has a question about anything, uh, raise your hand, please. Uh, there we go. How much or how soon? Uh, the 499 US, how much uh, UK? 349 pounds. Uh, 349 pounds, how soon? Uh, <coughs> uh, uh, David, you go, Nick. We should have these. Hello? Yeah, so we should have them um, in around eight, eight weeks, eight, 12 weeks around that. So, yeah, March time, approximately. Thank you. Anybody else? Not everybody wants. All right, if you, if you were too shy to ask a question, just inch your hand up just a little bit. All right, you're still sitting there, so you're, 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 you haven't left. Um, there we go. Cheers, mate. Thanks so much for coming. Really appreciate it. Okay. Uh, thank you so much. We're at the booth. Um, feel free to come by. I have set appointment times. I want to make sure that as you potentially want to come find out more information, I can focus completely on you. Um, so. I've got times that we can set up aside for each one of you. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you for tuning in. Really appreciate it. Cheers.